hey, uh, Sam, I, I was curious, in addition to the, to the obvious of, of, of wearing masks and, and going through a lot of the safety uh, protocols that you have to do, uh, are there certain things that you've had to make adjustments to even as you go through workouts, even the physical part of what you're doing on the practice field, things that are, that are any different than, say, how they were even last December when you were getting ready for the bowl game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that everything, everything in our lives has uh, had to change a little bit. Um, especially for me, as much as I lick my fingers, um, I, I'm trying to trying to cut that out. It's really tough for me uh, because it is a habit. But um, I think that there's a lot of different things, little things like that, uh, that I'm conscious of now that I wasn't in December. Go ahead, Dennis. Sam, it, it, it seems uh, in a simplistic way of looking at this, so much is on you college guys to almost be antisocial for the next, whatever, three, four months. How hard is that? How direct are the coaches are, are with you about their message for you away from, from uh, workouts? And does your discipline as a D1 athlete kind of help you maybe do this and pull this off where say your average college kid couldn't? Absolutely. Um, you know, Coach Herman he reiterates to us all the time that the most mature, responsible team will be um, the one that has a chance to compete this year. And it's, it's uh, very true. And so um, being a leader on the team, it's important that we, we continue to express that to the guys. Um, all, all the fun things in college will be there um, in January, if we can get through the season and avoid those distractions and avoid um, bringing the virus back to the team, that'd be a huge win for us. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, Sam, uh, we've heard from a lot of um, athletic directors uh, and conference commissioners over the past week, but haven't heard from many players. Um, you know, speaking for your locker room, are, are, are guys worried about getting sick or or do you feel like at y'all's age, you know, screw it? Or just what's, what's the real mood? Uh, the real mood, to be completely honest with you, is that Texas is taking the best care of us um, and has every single detail thought out to protect us from the virus that we feel comfortable being here. And we feel more comfortable being here than, than if we were at home. Um, talking with, with, players from other schools, we feel that um, the University of Texas is the gold standard for um, controlling and protecting um, the players. Roger, go ahead. Sam, what about the emotion last week? I, I'm guessing you know guys in the Big Ten and the Pac-12 that won't have a full season. There was some question about the Big Ten. What's it been like emotionally as a senior to kind of go through that roller coaster and still know that all this is right now is just a plan? You know, I try to I try to keep a positive outlook on everything, and um, you know, just be grateful for the opportunity to even play at this incredible university and play the sport that I love. Um, you know, I, I feel for for the guys in in the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Uh, it's extremely unfortunate, and you know, a lot a lot of the guys are like, "Why does this have to happen on our senior year or our junior year?" Um, but you know trying to control what we can control, um, keep our emotions um, directed at that and understand that right now, as of right now, we're playing on September 12th and, and um, we got to control that and, and be prepared for that. Anwar, go ahead. Um, Sam, um, I was kind of curious, like, you know, from a focus standpoint, how hard has that been, you know, for you guys where there's been so many things that are, are kind of unknown and, have you been able to think about maybe some of the things you want to accomplish heading into your senior season? You know, you haven't been able to win a Big 12 title yet. You've been in the game once. But is that something that also you think about, you know, as the season gets closer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really hard with everything going on. Um, you know, I think right now the number one goal for us is to, is to stay healthy throughout the season and not let 
let an outbreak happen that prevents guys from not being able to play. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to set any, any goals right now because we're, we're so focused on fall camp and, um, and getting better that we should be focused on fall camp right now. And then we'll, we'll reevaluate and be able to, uh, when, when the season comes, be able to take it game by game. Go ahead, Sid. Hey, Sam. Um, what was the hardest part about those five months um, starting in March? And uh, what, you know, that's the most different uh, spring that you got, everyone's ever been through. And also, who are you leaning on in that locker room to make sure that you guys stay focused, not only on football, but on the other responsibilities that come with uh, preventing outbreaks? I would say the hardest thing uh, with, with the five months off was not being able to be at the facility with all the guys um, and being able to be around my teammates and get in the weight room, get on the field and develop. Um, just being around the guys is something that I really missed. And then um, I think our, our leadership council uh, made up of a, of a good group of guys that uh, we kind of rely on to make sure that everybody's headed in the right direction and controlling, controlling the distractions and, and doing the right things. What you got, Bob? Sam, we've seen it in so many different, <clears throat> different places in major league sports where guys go out on their own and do something wrong or, or get in trouble one way or the other and bring it back. How much do you worry about, not really right now, but two or three months, two months maybe down the line when a guy is not happy that he's not getting playing time or he's, he gets upset and he ends up going out on his own and doing something on that front. How much do you worry about that? And, and what kind of leadership with the leadership council and, and your group, how much leadership do you have to have in, in those type of moments? It's going to be extremely hard. Um, I'd be lying if, if I told you it would be easy uh, to control you know, 118 to 22 year old guys in college. Um, but I, I don't worry about it. I think that, that we have enough leadership and, and mature guys on this team to uh, be able to control that. And um, if, if a guy were to slip up and, and had the virus in the building, that's the really awesome part about all the procedures and all the precautions that we're taking. Um, it would be very limited to the contact that they had with anybody else because of the measures that we're taking here in the building. Go ahead, Chip. Sam, uh, Tom said the, the scrimmage on Saturday was, was sloppy, but he said the defensive line was, was really, really good. Um, what, uh, what are you seeing? Three-part question. What are you seeing from the defense? How, how good is that defensive line, including the young guys like Collins and Vernon Broughton? Two, where's the offense right now in terms of your comfort level and installation and – and all that. And what has Isaiah Hook then shown you? Uh, yeah, the defense, the D line, you know, playing more of a four down front and allowing those guys to, to really rush the passer. Uh, put, definitely puts extra stress on the quarterback, um, extra pressure. And so I've been really, really, um, it's been great to be able to compete against them because now, you know, I have to make more movement in the pocket, sit in the pocket and, and trust those guys. So that's been really good. Um, and I'm really, really happy with, with how those guys have really taken control of, the, of their defense and had ownership in um, being the best that they can be. I think they're doing a really good job. And then um, offensively, I'm really excited. Um, I think that we, we have a chance to be extremely elite and um, – with all the talent that we have, getting those guys in space, going fast and um, letting them make plays. I'm, I'm really excited for them. And then, you know, Hook's been doing a great job. Um, extremely athletic young guy, um, comes in every single day with a great attitude, great work, work ethic. So he's been doing a really good job. Sam, go ahead. Hey Sam, now that you've been able to actually get on the field and get a feel for the offense under Coach Yursich, what are your impressions and what do you like about it? I love it. Uh, the attention to detail, um, the concepts are really, really good. Um, really everything about it. I love the way that Coach Yersich uh, approaches every day with such a, a professional mindset, attention to detail, intense, but um, informing. It's, it's been really good. I'm really excited for 
um, to continue to develop and then also to, to be able to play in his offense. Kirk, you're up. Uh, Sam, if, if for some reason the football didn't happen in the fall and they moved it to spring, would you play in the spring or would that be too much a risk for NFL draft and injury and all that? That, that's, a, that's a question that I have not thought about. Um, you know, as of right now, I'm, I'm trying to control the plan on September 12th and being prepared for that. Um, if things were to change, then I would reevaluate then and, and see what the circumstances were. You're muted. You're muted. Unmute yourself, Kirk. And where's the major production that fell in for Devin DuVernay? Where do you think those numbers will come from? Well, I think that it's going to be pretty spread out. Um, I think that a lot of guys have a chance to uh, make a big impact in production this year with the way that this offense uh, spreads the ball around. And then, um, you know, obviously, you know that the talent that we have in the running back room, um, the experience up front, that's a great combination for a, for a really solid running game. So I think that, I mean, honestly, everywhere has a chance to pick that production up. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Sam. I uh, wanted to ask a couple – well, just one question. Can you speak to some of the young players and what they have shown to you to show that they may be ready? I know it's still early, but who's impressed you the most during this uh, short period of time during camp? Well, uh, unfortunately, obviously, uh, Troy O'Meary was having a great fall camp. Um, he's a guy that – came in and, and was doing extremely well. Um, never want to see any injury with anybody. So that's been um, really unfortunate. Um, I, I, love, I love watching um, AC, big AC, Alfred Collins on the D-line. Uh, he's fun to watch. Really, um, all those guys, um, I really like the, the mindset and the way that, with, that this freshman class has come in and really attacked uh, the game. You can tell that they love it. Um, and they've been doing a great job. Jeff, you're up. Hey, Sam, just uh, two quick ones from me. One, how was it, you know, breaking in this, you know, I know you've been with some of these receivers, but this is your first fall or no Colin, no Devin. Uh, getting on the same page with some of your receivers with maybe not having the time in the off season, the structure that you would like to have. And then two, uh, what makes, you know, now with, Penn A. Sewell at Oregon, you know, the Pac-12 is not playing. A lot of your preseason lists are going to have Sam Cosby, who's maybe the top offensive tackle in the country. What makes Sam such a unique tackle prospect, in your opinion? What was the first question? Sorry. Just getting on the same page with your receivers, oh, yeah. not having the offseason structure. Yeah, I think uh, it was really important when we were able to come back um, and start working out that we got together and um, started working on the concepts that were being installed. And so, you know, just in practice, getting a lot of reps with those guys, being intentional about going with the guys um, that I need to develop with. And then um, Sam Cosme, obviously an incredible talent, incredible guy. And I've been blessed to have him block for me um, these, these past few years. And so, um, I think what makes him special is his athletic ability. You know, he's a, he's a guy that wouldn't be surprised if he ran a four, seven, four, six, I mean, just a freak athlete. Um, so strong and um, is able to use his body in such tremendous ways that, that he's able to um, hold up that left side really well. Steve, you're up. Hey, Sam, uh, just wanting to know where you guys stood, or you personally, where you are at this point in the season compared to where you have been in past seasons. How do you feel like you are uh, in the progression of things? And just exactly how much work did you do during the five months that you guys weren't doing uh, organized workouts? Yeah, the, the five months for me were, were huge. Um, I really tried to um, control what I can control and, and – um, take advantage of being at home and, and having a lot of off time. Um, so I, I tried to work extremely hard and um, obviously staying in shape and then also throwing the ball and working on some mechanical stuff. Um, but at this point, 
Um, I feel better than I ever have. Um, the development in the offense, I really, really like the offense. And um, I'm really excited. I think that uh, we're at a really good spot. And we obviously, we have to continue to develop and um, continue to work together and get better. But I'm really, really content with where we're at. Joe, you're up. Sam, you've had Sam Cosme block for you for the past couple of years, but you've also had Derek Kerstetter block for you for the past couple of years. How has he been doing uh, at center, and what's that adjustment like since this will be the first time that you won't be playing behind Shaq? He's, he's done it. Derek is, first off, he's an incredible, incredible friend. Um, what a selfless guy. Uh, great team player. He's made the transition from right tackle to center incredibly. Um, you know, he's made it a mission to pick up um, the little intricate, intri you know what I'm trying to say, the little details um, <laughs> that it takes to uh, play center. And he's done a great job with that. Um, but yeah, I've been really, really blessed to have both of those guys blocking for me. That's for sure. You don't want to re-answer that one? <laughs> they knew that, man. <laughs> Ryan, go ahead. Sam, this is, I know, I'm, I apologize. This is a too much of a big picture question here in the middle of August on Zoom, but we, but we don't get to talk to you that much. This is likely to be the last season you play wearing a Texas uniform, likely. Do you need a championship to solidify your reputation or whatever it is that you've done here? I think, I think that's, that's up for you to determine. Um, I know for myself, um, my, my mission at the University of Texas was, is to, to leave the program better than, better than it was when I got here. And um, that's kind of my mindset with everything that I do in life. And so um, if, I think that that's my main mission. And um, if I feel that in December or whenever the season ends, um, if, I, if I'm leaving um, and, and the program is better than, I, than, I, than it was when I first got here, uh, three and a half years ago, then I, I would say that, that that was a success in my mind. Chip, you're up. So, Sam, we're not getting any time at all with – well, we're not getting much time with you, but we're not getting any time with Mike Yersich. Um, take us behind the scenes with him. Maybe a first impression, um, what, what he's like when he gets mad, what, what's he like in practice, um, and, you know, just uh, – kind of fill in the blanks for us yeah he is uh, extremely passionate um, extremely passionate on the practice field off the practice field it's it's football all the time um, extremely smart extremely professional um, knows the x's and o's inside and out and he's a great play caller as well I um, in the in the few um, in the few live settings that we've had where we're actually moving the ball I've really just get in a great rhythm with him calling plays because um, he, he, he seems to call it really well and it flows really well. So um, very professional, very passionate, intense, um, and extremely intelligent when it comes to football. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Sam, did you cry when the LSU game got canceled? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so unfortunate. I was really looking forward to being able to go um, play at LSU, an incredible environment, obviously. Um, great game last year. And so, yeah, I'm really, really upset that we're not going to be able to go there and play them this year. Um, yeah. Roger, you're up. Does football feel different, Sam? I mean, obviously it looks different. Your coaches are masked up. You guys are doing different things. In the end, it's still getting ready for a season. But mentally, is it is it kind of different because other people maybe aren't able to do what they normally do and, and you guys are fortunate enough to do that? You know, not, I, I think that once, once we put the pads on and we get out on the practice field, um, everything besides having a mask on and not being able to breathe as well, everything it's, it's back to football. Um, and we're trying to control what we can control and what we can control is getting better every day. And that, that would be no different if, if none, none of this was going on. So um, once we get out on the field and, and um, the ball's put down, everything feels, feels back to normal. Go ahead, Bob. 
Sam, just wanted to ask you about two guys. Can you talk about the progress of, of Josh Moore, uh, especially after, you know, missing all of last year and, and where he is right now? And then with with Keontae and, and with Ro, uh, Roshan in the backfield, do you think you can maybe find a touch or two for Bijan? And uh, what's what's impressed you about him so far? Yeah. Um, you know, Josh, he, he loves the game. Um, very, very good receiver. I'm really excited to have him back. Um, very fast, loves the game of football, and is a great receiver. So it's it's always nice to have guys like Josh on the field. And then, um, yeah, Bijan is obviously an incredible talent, um, freak athlete. It's he he gets the ball, and you you I, I'm sometimes I'm just like I just want to watch him. I just want to watch him run. It's just really really fun to watch, and so. Um, what an incredible running back room that we have. Um, it'll be really fun this year to watch those guys do their thing. Go ahead, Jeff. Am I, am I unmuted? Can You're you good. Yep. Okay. Uh, Sam, I want to ask you about uh, Brennan Eagles specifically. And I know there was a time in you know, the late spring where Brennan was pretty vocal on social media about maybe not playing. What were your conversations like with him and, and what kind of camp has he had so far? Yeah, I, I am always – Brennan and I are really good friends. So, um, we're always talking about everything going on. And um, so, I, we've always been um, keeping each other up to speed on everything going on. And he's been having a great camp so far. Um, obviously, a freak athlete. Um, and he's been, he's been doing a really good job um, learning the playbook and, and going out there and performing. Dennis, you're up. Uh, you alluded to talking with the Big 12. How, how empowering was that for being a player to actually make an impact on, on what's going to happen at such a big time? And, and what was your biggest thing you wanted to communicate as a player? Yeah, we, Caden and I are extremely, and, and, and all the other players um, in that group from different schools are extremely grateful that the Big 12 has done that. Um, it's, it's really been um, – helpful for us to feel like that our voices are being heard and um, and then also know like what's going into their decision making process. So um, we're, I think that that's been an incredible um, thing that they've done for us. Um, and really, I, I think that for the most part, uh, I, I was just there to listen. I didn't really have a, um, an agenda going into it, but I, I did want to hear um, what they had to say and, and kind of what their what, what what everything was looking like. Travis, go ahead. Hey guys, we got time for the last three hands that are up. So just make them quick questions and we'll roll through them and finish it up. Go ahead, Travis. Sam, obviously you are big on control, what you can control, but unfortunately a lot of things are out of your control right now. You guys might do everything the right way, but it could be another school in the conference. It could be other students at UT themselves that might mess this up. So I'll ask ultimately, where's your confidence level that there will be a season this fall? I, I, have to, I have to tell myself that I'm 100% confident um, that there's going to be a season this year um, and because that's what we've been told. And um, with, with the procedures that we have here, I know that it's, I know that it's possible. Um, and so now it's up to us to control what we can control and um, help eliminate those distractions and help eliminate anything that could put, put a halt to that plan. Stephen, go ahead. Sam, does having two Power Five conferences potentially not playing um, take something away from a national championship? Like, does it does it kind of sour the thought of competing for a championship, considering that two major conferences that have had teams in the playoff just won't be competing? Um, well, we got to get there first. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe ask it, it when if we do have the opportunity to be playing in that. Ask me then. Last one. Go ahead, Chip. Sam, what uh, you know? Jordan Whittington, running back last year, hurt, and now he's at receiver. What what are you seeing from him? What what does he bring to that position? And um, you know, I guess he and Jake are battling it out in the slot. Or what can you tell us there? Uh, obviously, great to get Jay Witt back on the field. Um, he's an incredible athlete. 
and he's been doing a great job. You know, he, he has a really, really high football IQ, and so he's picked up the offense really quickly. Um, it's been great for him to, to get back in the flow of, of playing football. And so he's been doing a really good job, um, and I'm really excited to have him back out on the field.